Hey, welcome back friends. So today's subject is a permanent RV site and my five tips to get your permanent RV site. I think you'll find these very helpful. I hope you do at least. The reason we're doing this video is I put up a poll uh, about a month ago and asked you guys, would you be interested in a permanent site? We recently acquired a permanent site. We've really enjoyed it. We still like to roam around, but we have enjoyed that permanent site for sure. But we put that poll up. Over 733 of you uh, responded to that poll and exactly half, 50%, were interested in hearing more about a permanent site. Now, for some of you, it makes no sense to put an RV on a permanent site. I understand that. The RV has wheels for a reason, but with the shortage of HD trucks, with gas prices being absolutely ridiculous, a permanent site starts to become a little bit more attractive. So my five tips today, before we get into that, I hope you help us pay some bills and check out today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by RVmattress.com a Brooklyn bedding brand. Brooklyn bedding is known for the top of the line comfort and quality. Plus their mattresses are made right here in the good old USA and shipped to you for free. RVmattress.com makes mattresses perfect for your situation. That includes non-traditional sizes, even bunks. So RVmattress.com offers sizes ranging from six inches all the way up to 14 inches. These fits a lot of times are lighter in weight and also flexible, keeping underbed storage in mind. So when I'm searching for a mattress, comfort is key. And as you know, we're out adventuring during the day and we want to be super comfy when we're sleeping at night at the campsite. So a good night's sleep for me means we're gonna really enjoy our adventures the next day. So based on this, we got the queen size Aurora mattress in medium firmness. So we've been in this mattress now for a few months and it's undoubtedly the most comfortable mattress we've tried and we've tried several. It's even more comfortable than our mattress here at our Sticks and Bricks and that one costs hundreds of dollars more. So the best part about all of this is Brooklyn Bedding manufactures all of their RV mattresses in their own factory in Arizona. That means they can skip the middleman, use great materials and pass that cost savings on to you. Also, RVmattress.com delivers your mattress to you for free. The Brooklyn Bedding mattress comes rolled up in the box. It's super easy to get into the RV and install. So if it makes you nervous to buy something you haven't tried, Brooklyn Bedding has a 120 night sleep trial. So that means you get three months to decide if you love it. And if you don't, you get a full refund. On top of all this, RVmattress.com offers a 10 year warranty. So you can rest easy on all of your exciting adventures. So I love our RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding and I think you would too. So if you're looking for a new RV mattress, be sure to check out RVmattress.com. Hop down there, click on the link below, or go to RVmattress.com slash wondering. You're gonna type in the promo code wondering and save 20% on your mattress. So thanks again for RVmattress.com for giving you guys a promo code. Now let's get back to today's video. Okay, friends, let's jump right in. I, for this purpose of this video, we're going to assume that you've already picked out an area that you're interested in putting the RV, whether it be the mountains, the beach, uh, you know, a lake, a river, something like that. We're going to assume that you already have a general area picked out. Now, once you have your area, you'll start researching campgrounds that you're interested in, and then you need to go visit those campgrounds. Once you've done all of that, you need to get two to three options that you can live with. So two to three options you like, you if within your price range, you, you feel like, uh, the campground seems to be neat enough for you, um, you know, whatever else. It seems to fit your style. You know, some campgrounds are super tidy and clean. Others, you know, not so much, right? Not, not fancy at all. Ours kind of probably fits in the middle of those two. It's not super fancy, but it's pretty tidy. It's okay. But, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll have price issues. Some are cheaper than others. But either way, we're going to assume that you've already figured that out and get your give yourself two to three options and get on their waiting list. All right, my second tip, once you've gotten on these campground waiting lists, start to dig into their rules. So maybe something you overlooked, you wanna go ahead and get on the waiting list. You can always say no if you dig into the rules and find something you really don't like, but go ahead and get on the waiting list first, that's number one. But then start digging into their rules. Now, a lot of these campgrounds are privately owned and they have some very odd rules at times. Sometimes they're regular rules like you'd have at a state park or a COE, something like that. Other times they have weird rules. Uh, one weird rule that we have, that's hard to say, one weird rule that we have in our permanent location is your dogs can't leave your site. You have to take them beyond the front entrance to let them use the bathroom. Now, if they can use the bathroom on your site, but that's not very, I don't like that at all. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a pain. Now, luckily we have a little grass spot kind of close to us that we kind of sneak over to every once in a while. But yeah, for the most part, we have to take them 
to the front entrance and let them go. Why they did that, I don't know. I think they had an incident where somebody got bit and the owner was like, nope, we're just not going to deal with this anymore. And so, yeah, it's that's a weird rule, right? Most campgrounds, you can walk your dog and, and do whatever. Not at our permanent site. And there's going to be other odd rules as well. What you can build, what kind of decks you can build, if you can build fences, if you can put up sheds. All of those rules are different in every single campground. So make sure to dig in those into those campground rules. Okay, so number one was have two to three options. Now, number two was to dig into those two to three options, dig into their rules. All right, you've already done all of that. Number three is see if there's a sublease available at your options. So call up the campground manager or the owner, whatever, whoever's running the campground, and see if there's a sublease available. A lot of times the people that have permanent sites, they still travel. So, you know, whether they're, they're taking a two-week trip out west or, you know, a big road trip. We're in Georgia, so that's why I say out west. Um, or whether they're on some type of road trip or whether or not they're just renting out their site because they need help paying for it now. They still want to keep it, but they need to sublease it uh, to help pay offset costs. So yeah, see if there's a sublease available and, and, and take that sublease and see if, make sure that you like the area, that you like the campground, spend some nights in the campground, make sure there's not a bunch of yahoos there. Most of the time there's not. And so, but yeah, see if there's a sublease available and if there is, make sure to take it. Okay, so you've already done one, two, and three. We've already gone through all of those. Number four, the campground calls and they've got a spot for you take it. Take the very first thing that pops up. Now, obviously you have to, your rig has to fit. Okay. Um, and if you've chosen the campground, you should be okay with the campground, but take the first thing that pops up. Here's why. When a better site pops up in the campground, the people that are already in the campground are going to get first dibs. All right. If you're going to sit on a waiting list for your perfect spot at your perfect campground, you're never going to get that site because people in the campground already know that that's a good site and they've already told the manager, hey, if that site ever comes available, let me know. They're gonna find out way before anyone on the waiting list. So go ahead and get in your campground and then you'll ha start to have first dibs. You'll start going up the pecking order, right? As far as being able to cherry pick the best sites. Obviously campgrounds have good sites and not so good sites, all of them are like that. But if you're in the campground, you can improve your sites while you're in there, you're not going to be able to do that while you're sitting on a waiting list. All right, my fifth tip, final tip, be willing to sign a little bit longer lease if it'll save you some money. So especially if you've already, if you've already subleased there and you know you like it, maybe you, uh, maybe you're in, um, you've been there for a little while and now your second year's come up. It's like, hey, can I sign a two-year lease and save a little bit of cash? There, most of the time, private owners are up for that. You invest in them, they'll invest in you. You know, ask them if you can get a discount if you do some site improvements. You guys saw that we did some site improvements on our campsite. We continue to do those. And the reason the campground's not doing that is because our monthly payments are so cheap. I'm not going to get into how much they are, but this is a good deal. Okay. So I have no problem making my own, paying for my own site improvements at this particular campground. You know, other campgrounds, you'll pay enough to where you expect them to do that. But yeah, ask them, hey, if I sign a little bit longer lease, can I save some money? If I pay cash, can I save some money? You guys know how that works. We all live in the real world here. So make sure to ask those questions. Most of the time, campground owners, campground managers will absolutely work with you in that fashion. Okay, friends, there's my five tips. Uh, if you have any questions, please hop down in the comment section and let me know. I respond to them as quick as I can. We get a bunch of comments on the channel, but I do my very best to respond to all of them. Uh, if I miss your comment, I'm, I'm terribly apologetic, but I try to get to most of them. Drop those questions in the comments below. Uh, yeah, we really enjoy our permanent site. Now, if we had to choose between having a permanent site uh, or moving around, we would definitely move around. But having that permanent site, not having to worry about booking on holidays, uh, not having to worry about whether or not we can go camping on a whim is really, really nice. And we also make friends up there. Like you start to have a, you, there's definitely a community in the campground and we're real lucky. We have some great neighbors. We have some great campers up there. And so it's nice to be looking forward to seeing those folks from time to time. There's definitely some advantages to being in a permanent site.
Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, as always, please consider subscribing. See ya.